Google Stadia is not something you hear about very often these days, and when you do, it is usually in the news, not for a very good reason. Um, this happened about a week ago when John Justice, who is the um, product head at Google Stadia, left the company. This comes in the wake of a major shutdown where Google just totally closed its first party game development studios, uh, including the kind of flagship one that they had uh, Jade Raymond re running, and she has already left with a bunch of other Stadia folks that are now building a game at a new company for PlayStation. Um, it is left kind of everybody wondering what is going to happen to Google Stadia going forward. And the current situation it has put itself in has kind of really narrowed its options to a point where it's a little hard to see it recovering. With that said, it doesn't seem like it's able to die <laughs> given the model it kind of encompasses. Uh, Stadia always kind of attracted a lot of uh, problems because it was it had a, a subscription model which gave you some access to higher tier streaming and some free games, but it also wanted you to purchase games uh, individually. So <laughs> people would build up a Stadia library of games and now uh, everyone is worried that Stadia might just shut down, but Google would be kind of remiss to do that because if they did, everyone would just lose their libraries. And this is kind of the ultimate fear of moving away from physical media like video game discs to just something that is entirely cloud-based that you have no control over if they just shut their servers down. Uh, the way forward for Google seems very hard because they are now competing with Microsoft xCloud, which is the streaming service built into the Xbox ecosystem. And Microsoft is promoting that alongside Game Pass and alongside its increasingly large roster of first-party releases. And Google has pretty much just conceded the entire uh, idea of first-party Stadia releases without even releasing um, more than a handful of, of small exclusive Stadia games, uh, and then none really that were developed by its big mega studio that were that was supposed to, uh, in the future, create kind of big must-have titles for it. So now it just sort of exists where it's grabbing third parties to be accessible on Stadia when it can, uh, but it can't really compete with Microsoft. And Amazon is also currently developing a streaming service called Luna, but it's anyone's guess how that's going to go. And Amazon has not really shown that they can make games, uh, but we don't know how their streaming service will perform. Um, Stadia, it, it's frustrating because there are many aspects to Stadia that are great. Uh, it is probably the easiest way to play games on, on the go when you're traveling. You can play it on, on almost any device in a browser. It avoids a lot of the problems that we see um, with modern games, and there's a lot of ease of use features where you don't have to download patches or anything like that. Uh, some games, you, you're just pretty much entirely immune to cheating because they're the way that the structure of the game is set up, there is physically no way for people to cheat. However, um, without a lineup of kind of must-have exclusives and with this very strange um, individual purchase model, there's no real incentive to adopt anything wider than a mass audience. So where I see Stadia going in the future is not shutting down. I don't think Google will just close Stadia overall, um, but we may see it kind of just shift into maintenance mode where Maybe some games still continue to come to Stadia and they keep the service online, but they keep moving away resources. You'll see more people leaving the team um, and things like that because it really does not seem like they're in a place to kind of double or triple down on the idea where some of their cloud competitors are uh, at least in a, in a better position to start with where Stadia has been trying this for a while. Their initial shot missed by several hundred thousand users. Like they, they did not get the signups they were hoping for. Uh, so it has been a pretty rough road for them almost the entire time. There's been a few bright spots. Uh, Cyberpunk actually ran amazingly when it launched on Stadia compared to some of the other platforms. But for every bright spot, there's just kind of the overall question of who are this, who is this for? And if it's not for a large enough audience to kind of impress Google, are they just going to abandon it? So I do see it kind of moving into maintenance mode and we will see what happens next. But um, we, we just don't really know. And it has not been whole lot of good news lately. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.